substantial island in the middle of a lake in the state of Indiana. And the treasure of Clear Lake is fairly I went famous. to the old library and, and look, went through the archives and I, I found several people who uh, were county historians and they were pretty helpful. But the island itself, and we'll blow this up. This is a huge lake. I, if I remember right, this eight, this is six acres or six point five acres. Uh, the island is that I ran across in old newspapers and uh, county records. They seem to pretty much jive with what the larger published where you would think it might be embellished. Now this this lake is extremely shallow. So I planned an expedition up here, just specifically a treasure hunting vacation with uh, <clears throat> and we had plenty of gear. We tied our boat to the island. There is an area, the whole island is used as a party place. So it's really trashy. It's been used as a party spot for a hundred years. Uh, so you guys uh, hunting the rings, you've done everything I had read. Round brick structure that was uh, handmade bricks out of the bottom of the lake. And I mean, I could tell right away I was looking at something that was Super never old. seen construction like it before. Never Later on, I found time it. just after the story of the treasure originated, and that somehow this normal guy bought three banks just shortly after buying or taking possession of the island, and then parlayed that into like 12 banks and it's a whole banking family today and, and so I always just took it for granted that <clears throat> this guy had found the treasure and, and that's how he became so wealthy family or organization that owned it uh, donated it to a college up there and then the college auctioned it off, and I believe it went for, <clears throat> I think it went for just a flat one million. I don't know who owns it now. I don't know what they've done up there now. Uh, chances are they've done nothing because building on this island, a, a huge of, uh, about five trips up here. Uh, two of them were strictly devoted to treasure hunting. A uh, story went that the guy that lived here, and we actually found his house, and it's right, it's right in this area. If you come to the fire pit, the fire pit, which almost looks like a wishing well, the bottom of a wishing well, building construction of the uh, little cabin. They were formed and poured walls out of concrete made out of the bottom of this lake, and you could see all the shells and things in it. Then it had uh, steel, forged steel, in uh, in the walls to hold things like the window casings and the door casings, which all that stuff was gone. But you could tell you were looking at a 1840s or earlier structure. The foundation and the walls were one piece from under the ground to about, I'd say, a foot up on the windows, a foot above the base of the window. So you would had very strong walls, and then I'm sure the place was molded right into the construction, uh, and then rocks added to the back as the flue. Uh, almost all that was collapsed, but you could tell what it used to look like. Never seen anything like it. I, it took my breath away when I found the cabin base because then I knew that I was absolutely in the right place. This was this man's cabin, and I, 
I, I sold those books on eBay that pertain to this, so I don't have them anymore. Uh, I sold a whole bunch of pretty much all my treasure books Oops. there in this little cabin in the on the uh, island in the middle of this lake in northern Indiana, northeastern Indiana. He was an outlaw, and he, if you came near his island, you know, he would, he'd see you coming in your boat, and he'd, he'd shoot you. He was, I think he was a bank robber, but he was somehow tied in with the younger, or younger gang out west, uh, Missouri, to meet up with them, but he had all this, uh, gold and silver. And because it was heavy, he took uh, a lot of it with him. He took all his paper money with him because it was very easy to carry. He took quite a bit of gold and some silver, like an entire saddle pack full of silver. None of the documentation ever established how they estimated what he had left behind. And I guess the way they did it was from what he had stolen. Like about 50% of the amount that he had stolen, they thought he had stashed somewhere. Everyone always thought in his cabin on the island. Um, I'm thinking he probably didn't stash it in the cabin. That would just be too obvious. This area you see around the island... This Google Earth thing kind of sees through the uh, through the water, but that's all nice beach sand. But it's underwater. Dollar estimates that were published, and, and it always seemed like it was kind of speculation. Sorry, since it's being recalled from memory, I I no longer have any of my. Um, I may have some notes on it, but I don't have. The number was ten thousand dollars in. Uh, gold and silver coins lot basically would probably fall in there somewhere between four hundred and eight hundred thousand if there were rare coins then yeah you could throw all those estimations out the line will be way more than that I always figured it was about a uh, a one million dollar uh, score or you know, maybe it was just a fraction of that, but, you know, a fraction of that would have been great. And I had a lot of funny, fun looking for this uh, sure. treasure. If you want to go uh, pursue it, yeah, first you have to find out who, you know, what's what's the status of the island. But I, I'm pretty sure that if the treasure is there, that I know where it is. Of course, that's what everybody says. Since it's a well-documented treasure, I, back in the day, you know, back in the, I believe when it was supposed to have been uh, lost, so to speak, it was 1860, right in that. Area. But my theory was, after a lot of research on this, and you can't tell by these pictures, but this area right in here is marshy. The cabin sets right at the edge of the swamp. I did a lot of thinking about that. And for one, I pretty much think this treasure has been found years and years ago. Is there more? It's possible. But looking on the island, I, I don't think it would be the way to go. The biggest part of the story said that he hid it somewhere in the swamp, which, you know, that'd be a good place to, uh, <clears throat> always, uh, always easy to dig there because the ground's wet, uh, easy to conceal, uh, where you bury the swamp, and, and, and when they say swamp, I mean, we're only talking maybe an inch or two of water, uh, half of the year or something like that, I mean, it's not like down in the body, very mushy and uh, peat here. Originally built that cabin, they did a 
really good job building it. They put a lot of time and, and work and money put into it. It was just skill. And I don't think they would have built it on the edge of a swamp like it is today. And being that we're talking, you know, 150 years ago, I think that the island has gotten smaller and that the swamp has gotten far larger foundation of the little cabin. You just wouldn't build a cabin there. They mentioned that over this direction there was a swamp. So I'm thinking that this area you see under the water is the size that the island used to be and that if the treasure still exists I'll just bet you that somewhere under this water somewhere around the tip of this island could be a million dollars in gold and silver supposed to be 20,000 face I, I don't remember the exact numbers but I remember back when I was looking for it um, I mean we were talking 450 gold or something back then and it had a, a value at that time it was uh, 400 to 800,000 I think that was based on a, on a 40 fold increase So there's my treasure story for uh, some of you metal detector uh, enthusiast, uh, treasure hunters, etc. to uh, take a vac vacation. Um, I mean, that's a, a great lake. You can scuba dive, you can ski, whatever. Uh, I don't remember how long this is, uh, but for some of you ring grabbers, uh, and the bottom of this lake is really nice and sandy. Uh, it is uh, a natural lake, so you could find very old stuff there. The uh, island has a very uh, well-documented treasure. As far as the state of Indiana, I think it is the best documented. Maybe it's just because that's the one I always focused on. Uh, is the treasure still there? I, if it's not, those people aren't talking, and it was their grandparents, uh, great grandparents, that are not talking. Over in Ohio, up in Michigan, here in Indiana, this would be uh, great. It's Angola. Angola is the uh, library uh, archives of Indiana. I don't know if you can see all the different lakes right. down through there. Treasure hunters that uh, want to pick those rings out of the lakes. This, this would be awesome because, you know, these are all natural all natural lakes and uh, I, I think I just think those are so much better than some of these uh, man-made lakes reservoirs that kind of thing treasure of clear lake thanks for watching